Hi Phil, can you tell me where we are please? Plimpton, Long Bridge. Not the original Long Bridge. The original Long Bridge was not a bridge at all. It was a causeway built over marsh mills to allow people access from Plimpton and the South Hams to come into Plymouth. Traders would travel in from the South Hams into Plymouth via the Long Bridge, unload their wares and market produce and return with money. So Phil, what happened here in the Civil War? In late 1642, Sir Rolf Hopton had raised the Cornish army and this army he persuaded to come into Devon and besiege Plymouth. It was about three and a half thousand men and he marched over the moors in late November towards Plimpton. A man called Colonel William Rutherford who commanded in Plymouth was concerned about this so he sent scouts out to Plimpton to watch the, for the enemy approach and see the size of the army. These men went to the village of Plimpton and by the end of November, the last day of November, the Royalists were approaching and they could see how many they were. So the few scouts withdrew back to Plymouth, told their commander what was happening. So he brought a force of 270 men out to the causeway, the Long Bridge. Well, the, where was that place? The Long Bridge. Yeah, the Long Bridge. Well, over Marsh Mills, towards the left. It's to the left there. of this position, where the roundabout is. It was the road from Plimpton to Efford Hill. So the real Long Bridge wasn't a bridge? No. It was a... Causeway. And can you explain what that, what, what that is, please? It's a, people would come out, workers, they would throw earth, stone, wood, anything they could to raise a piece of, uh, la, a, like a causeway across a marsh ground so people could travel safely across. So I guess that only worked at low tide? Low tide, and usually even at high tide it worked. Can you it didn't go under really. Scene here? What would we have seen if we stood here back in the day of the Civil War? Well, if you were Prince, if you were Lord Rolf, Sir Rolf Hopton, you would have come down from Plimpton to view Plymouth, which, is, which he did. Plimpton is that, that way, way isn't yeah. It? Yes. The old town, and he would have come down here with his scouts, observed Sir Rolf Hopton and his men across the other side of the causeway. On the other side of the Plym. Yeah, the causeway, yes. yeah. Yeah. And he would have seen Efford Hill, all barren in those days because yes. there was no word on there, there were no trees. And he would have looked over and seen the first earthworks going up at Lipson That's and Lara Point Work. The defences of the, Plymouth. The out, outer defences of Plymouth. Right, yes. And that frightened him. Right. He didn't really want to risk his army because they were undisciplined. They were just a new army, Cornishmen. They didn't want to fight in Devon, they didn't want to leave their county. But they came because Rolf Hopton was very persuasive and he had some great regimental commanders. You would have seen Saltram House, which the Royalists occupied. Which is just there, isn't it? Yep, over, over that there. way. Yes, yeah. Home of Sir James Bag. Um, Hopton's headquarters were Plimpton Castle. Was that Plimpton Castle, his headquarters? And his men camped around. They threw up earthworks to protect themselves in case of attack. What do you think Efford Hill would have been used for in the Civil War? Lookouts. It was too far out of Plymouth to be part of the defences because the further out you came, Plymouth's defences were very sort of intricate. There was a, a line, Plymouth is on the edge of three ridges if you like, and the further out you go, the more extensive these ridges become. The one they picked, the North Road Ridge, I call it the North Road Ridge, um, is protected by two streams. So that's the least, the, the less, the least land there is the Mutley Plain Ridge in those days. So whoever def built the defences on that ridge, had chosen a good spot. This would have been too far out and the Royalists could have just walked through with our defences. So whose lookouts would have been up there? The men for Plymouth or the men for the King? The men from Plymouth at the early days right. because um, it wasn't a close siege. Hopton was wary about coming too close to Plymouth so he sent outposts to Crown Hill, oh sorry, Crown Hill, Wydy and a Stoke. He went up as far as Stoke but he kept his main force this side of the River Plym because he had that defence between him and Plymouth. He wasn't sure how many men were in Plymouth. He saw the forts, he knew he couldn't really attack. So what he did while he was here at Plimpton, he sent two of his regiments to Mobbury to raise the Devon Royalists. Um, while his men were there raising these Royalists uh, militia men, they came into a big party at Mobbury. They thought it was a big party. Thousands of them came together, drinking, eating, having a great time. On December the 6th, Colonel Ruthven decided to attack. So he took about 300 horse 
out of Plymouth, over the moor, towards Ivy Bridge, and approach Mobbury at dawn on December the 7th. He struck Mobbury, defeated, broke up the militia in no time. There's a little story about that, isn't there? There is, the runaway oh, lane. <laughs> a lot of the Royalist uh, soldiers um, just broke up and fled because they weren't soldiers. The Devon militia were not soldiers. They were untrained, uh, trained bandsmen they were called, but they weren't really there for a good time. So the, the Battle of Mobbury, the first Battle of Mobbury, all the sort of top wigs, all the big wigs, all the colonels and the knights went into the Champernow mansion for safety and the Roy, the roundheads came around them. Um, the, the rest just fled. Um, it was a there's funny a situation. Today, isn't there, too, isn't yeah, Runaway Lane. Yeah, Runaway, Runaway Lane. Lane in Mobbury is, is where they still fled. There today? Yeah, it's still there today. One just behind the, the church. One other thing, Phil. This is the River Plym here. It is the Plym. I guess in the days of the Civil War, it would be a much more spread out Plym, wouldn't it? It would be wider, but it was silted up by this time. Right. It was well silted up from the tin mines. Uh, so, there was a fort up by Plym Bridge Woods, though, so that makes it a bit more interesting for the historians. Thank but we're not sure much, where sir. it was. You're very welcome. Thank you. Thank you.